This is the first Tuesday of the month Wapaka City Council meeting. Okay, welcome to everybody. We have a couple of items that we have to do before we start our regular city council meeting tonight. Uh, actually, the first item on on the council's agenda tonight is a public hearing for a proposed resolution number 1434, which is to discontinue a portion of the public right of way known as Shamble Road. And uh, Justin, if you could just explain where that is and what what's what's that all about? Yep, sure, Mayor. Um, so the, what we're looking to do here is a project within the city uh, off of Ware Street uh, to uh, basically vacate a portion of Shamble Road. That's the road that leads up to our, our water tower uh, just north of the tracks there and uh, rededicate a new section uh, working in conjunction with Gusmer Enterprises on a project where they will be expanding uh, their facility. Uh, so to make room for the expansion, uh, to ensure that we have a water line that is connecting uh, back to our uh, distribution system within the city, we're realigning the road and the water main. Uh, so this is just um, basically following through with what you've seen in the past for this project of uh, discontinuing a portion of the, of the public right of way uh, and then uh, moving forward with the project and rededicating a new section to make that all possible. Thanks, Justin. So this requires a public hearing and that's why we're having this public hearing tonight. So at this time, I would ask that if anybody would like to get testimony in favor of Resolution number 1434, please step up to the podium, give your name and address for the record, and limit your discussion to three minutes or less. Any testimony in favor of? Hello, Chris Gusmer. I uh, reside at 703 Sunset Drive, Wapaka, speaking in support of the Gusmer Enterprises project and particularly the resolution to discontinue the right of way. Uh, we're excited for the city to be working with us on this. The project uh, should be a nice benefit to the community over time, over a few years, should generate uh, 20 to 30 new jobs for the community, as well as the diff uh, additional tax revenue. So thank you guys for uh, supporting. All right. Thank you, Chris. Anybody else that would like to give testimony in favor of the resolution, resolution number 1434? Any other testimony in favor of? Is there any testimony in opposition to resolution number 1434, which is to continue, discontinue a portion of the public road right away known as Shamble Road? Any testimony in opposition? Uh, hearing none, seeing none, uh, I'll declare this uh, hearing closed at uh, 6.03 p.m. <coughs> Okay, and then one more item before we get to the uh, regular council meeting. This has to do with the uh, Inland Lakes Protection and Rehabilitation District. You know that we just had a meeting, of course, uh, uh, the, third, the third Tuesday of August, but we have another item that we did not put on that agenda, so we're asking that we convene a meeting tonight uh, to... Uh, take up that one item that was that we didn't have on there. So I'm calling this uh, Inland Lakes Protection and Rehabilitation District meeting to order. Uh, in attendance, uh, Sandy? Brian Smith? Here. Steve Hackett? Here. Lori Chestnut? Here. Paul Hagen? Here. Ellen Keeland? Here. Scott Krachatsky? Here. Dave Peterson? Here. Paul Mayo? Here. Dimitri Martin? Here. Mary Fair? Here. And Eric Olson. Here. Ten present. We have a quorum. Okay. And you have an agenda, which basically has one item on there to speak of the resolution number IL-49. We'd be looking for a motion to approve that agenda. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Keelan, second by Hackett, that we approve of the agenda. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? <coughs> Motion carried. Uh, resolution number 
IL-49. Andrew, you give us some detail here. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just quickly here, this is just um, something that Ontario LLC uh, has requested um, now that we passed the Inland Lakes budget uh, at the last meeting. Um, what this uh, is is just an authorizing resolution. Uh, it needs to be part of the grant application, and uh, without it, that grant would be considered incomplete. So it's just a form that needs to go, essentially states that we will cover our amount of the cost um, if the grant is received. And again, if no grant is received, uh, we won't move forward uh, with that. So uh, tonight, just requesting that the Wapak Inland Lakes Protection and Rehabilitation District uh, approve the authorizing resolution IL-49 so we can get it signed and get it over to Ontario. All right, everybody understand? Again, then, uh, staff is recommending that we approve this resolution. <coughs> Second. Motion by Hackett, second by Keelan that we approve of resolution number IL-49. <laughs> Any other discussion? Sandy will call the roll. Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. Steve Hackett. Aye. Dimitri Martin. Aye. Lori Chestnut. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. Paul Hagan. Aye. Paul Mayo. Aye. Eric Olson. Aye. And Dave Peterson. Aye. Ten ayes. Motion carried. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Andrew. And then uh, we need to close this meeting, so we would need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Chestnut. Second. Second by Peterson that we adjourn this uh, Inland Lakes Protection and Rehabilitation District meeting until our next annual meeting, August 2020 and always subject to call. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, <clears throat> motion carried. We're adjourned at uh, 6.07 p.m. And now we go to the regular city council meeting, and I do call this meeting to order. It is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019, and the time is, sure, 6.07 p.m. And let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll ask Sandy to read the clerk's open meeting statement for us. This meeting and all other meetings of the Common Council are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin state statutes so the citizens may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. And uh, also take roll for us, Sandy. Ryan Smith. Here. Steve Hackett. Here. Lori Chestnut. Here. Paul Hagan. Here. Alan Keeland. Here. Scott Prochatsky. Here. Dave Peterson. Here. Paul Mayo. Here. Dimitri Martin. Here. Mary Fair. Here. And Eric Olson. Here. Ten present, we have a quorum. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, next up is the consent agenda. These are items where we take all with one motion and vote on that one motion altogether, unless a council member or staff would like to see any one of those items move from the consent agenda to the regular agenda where we'll discuss and act on those individually. Anybody would like to see the consent agenda changed? Uh, if not, we need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion approved. Second. Motion by Olson, second by Keelan that we approve the consent agenda as printed. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against. Motion carried. Under the regular agenda, Sandy tells me there's a couple of changes here, so Sandy. Um, addendum number one was uploaded to the city website on August 30th deleting number nine, new business letter H, which is resolution number 1436, authorizing the resolution for lake management plan. And then a revised timetable was also uploaded. And then the Inland Lakes Protection and Rehabilitation District Meeting Agenda and Packet was also uploaded on August 30th. That's it. All right, so everything uh, is the same except for number nine, uh, which is being deleted. So we need a motion to approve that agenda. 
Second. Motion by Hackett, second by Chestnut that we approve uh, the agenda <laughs> with those changes. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? <laughs> Motion carried. <clears throat> Non-agenda items and announcements, uh, we have public input. Uh, this is for uh, non-agenda items. If anybody would like to speak to the council and staff about a, a non-agenda items, please step up to the podium and give your name and address for the record. My name is Barbara Ladke, E2163 Larson Road, Wapaka. And I'm here tonight, I'm representing the Wapaka Rotary Club. And I'm just here to offer thanks to the city council and for the city for the support that you've given us, especially during Oktoberfest that's coming up this Friday when we take over North Main Street. Um, and our group is part of the Wapaka Area Arts and Culture Network that is a result of the city's uh, efforts, the plan, the cultural plan that was initiated in 2018. So we're working together with many other groups and um, we just wanted to decide that we wanted to tell you guys thank you and not actually ask for anything. It went tonight. <laughs> Along with offering thanks, though, we want to encourage the city's continued support and willingness to look ahead as the plans for infrastructure are being made. We want to continue to utilize and highlight the city's downtown area. So we hope that the city considers options for creating public spaces that are conducive to the many outdoor events that are held in the downtown area. Because of the city's support to Rotary, our downtown Oktoberfest, our biggest fundraiser of the year, we've been able to contribute thousands of dollars to our local schools and in Rotary grants. Rotary also wants to recognize our partnership with the city at Rotary Park and the potential for continued growth. Uh, the use of Rotary Park enhances and increases um, the beauty and the value of those Cooper Street uh, properties, and we just think that's a great opportunity to continue as well. So again, thanks for your continued support, and especially the city staff who's worked with us. Thank you, Barb. Anybody else that would like to give uh, public input? Uh, if not, then we'll move on to unfinished business. Uh, we have uh, resolution number 1434, which is the one that we just had the public hearing on. This is a resolution to discontinu discontinue the right of way located uh, in the city of Opac, Opac County, Wisconsin. And Justin, you want to just again update us here? Yep, sure thing, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> so, seen, seen on page 76 of your packet is the resolution. Uh, again, the description of what that is is within that. Uh, so the request was made uh, by Gusmer Enterprises to vacate a portion of the right-of-way uh, known as Shamble Road uh, in order to basically accommodate for their expansion. Uh, we have done an extensive review of the project, the uh, road realignment and you know, long-term planning. Uh, there is no adverse effects that we see here, uh, here today, tomorrow, or even years into the future. Uh, we see this as a good project. Uh, <clears throat> so basically what this resolution is doing is just the legal part of uh, basically uh, vacating a portion of Shamble Road, uh, which is on Exhibit A is the legal description. Uh, exhibit B, which is not in your packet, is a, uh, excuse me, a uh, drawing, uh, which I threw up on the TV there, um, showing the portion of Shamble Road that will be vacated. Uh, Ware Street to the south uh, and the new Shamble Road realignment will go around the expansion. Um, this map here shows an aerial review. The red lines show where the new uh, road will be aligned. Uh, the part that's being vacated here by this resolution is right here in the middle. Uh, so the road will be vacated and the water main will be rerouted. So with the resolution, uh, it will be discontinuing the right of way legally as I've already described and then also an amendment to the official map. So this is going into effect after uh, your approval tonight. All right, uh, anybody have any questions on that? If not, uh, we would look for a motion to approve uh, resolution number 1434. Move to approve 1434. 
Motion by Dave Peterson, second by Eric Olson, that we approve resolution number 1434. It's a resolution to discontinue right away located in the city of Opaca, Opaca County, Wisconsin. Uh, any discussion? Sandy will call the roll. Paul Hagen. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. Dimitri Martin. Aye. Eric Olson. Aye. Paul Mayo. Aye. Steve Hackett. Aye. Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Alan Keeland. Abstain. Mary Fair. Aye. And Lori Chestnut. Aye. Nine ayes, motion carried. Okay, so next we have uh, ordinance number 0619, and, and I just need to, to probably do some of my uh, work before I start this. Uh, as, as you've all noticed, probably Aaron Jensen is here, uh, sitting up here, not a name tag yet, but he started his first day today as city administrator, so be nice if you want. <laughs> but just in case you're not nice, we have Russ Van Gumpel here to help him out, uh, and Russ will be here with us uh, uh, for quite a few weeks, months, until we all feel comfortable, and, and especially Aaron feels comfortable with that position. So uh, this, and the reason I'm saying this right now is that this ordinance number 0619, this is one that we're having Russ uh, take care of for us tonight. Russ? Sure, this is the second reading for uh, proposed ordinance. Uh, the ordinance really allows for the city to participate in um, purchasing agencies, uh, purchasing programs, um, in using either the county or the state bid. Should be important to note that this does not relieve the obligation of using the public bidding law provision. It simply means that instead of the city doing uh, the, the bidding requirements and meeting the, the state statute on public bidding, that other entities, whether it's a state, county, or purchasing group, still has to follow those um, uh, state statutes. Um, it just allows the city to participate in ba basically a larger purchasing block, whether it's you know at a county level, a state level, or or through a group. Um, and so there's one section that that talks about the operating expenses, one section that talks about capital expenditures, and then it actually calls out and puts into code a policy on professional services that was actually approved by the city council back in 2005. There was a huge debate in 2005 that they wanted to leave that as a policy. So the policy will stay into place. And you're adopting the policy that the city council in 2005 approved, but it's just calling for recognition of that policy in your code book. Um, with that, I would entertain any questions that council members might have. And again, Russ, you just explained that this was the second reading, so we would vote on this tonight if council so chooses. And I don't know if the clerk's office has had anybody contact you about this ordinance change. Okay, so do we have a motion? I move to approve. Second. Motion by Keelan, second by Martin, that uh, ordinance number 0619-2019, an ordinance under City of Wapaka, Chapter 3, Finance and Taxation, Section 3.05, Purchases, Appropriations, Payrolls, uh, Amending Chapter 3.05. Any discussion? Sandy will call the roll. Eric Wilson. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. Lori Chestnut. Aye. Dimitri Martin. Aye. Uh, Paul Hagen. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Steve Hackett. Aye. And Paul Mayo. Aye. Ten ayes. Motion carried. Okay, uh, next up is, again, Russ, uh, ordinance number 0719. This is also a second reading. Yes, Mayor. Um, what, be, what is presented before you, and it's on page 80 in your packet, is an ordinance that would actually... Um, change the terms and conditions for the city administrator. 
This would make the city code consistent with an employment agreement entered into uh, with Mr. Jensen. The, the big change is uh, for the dismissal. Um, in the old code, the dismissal is based on a three-fourths vote. The new code says um, the standard would be two-thirds vote. And it's important to note that it's the council and the mayor that would be making that determination. Hopefully, the city never has to use this uh, provision. But this ma makes this uh, provision consistent with the employment uh, contract with Aaron. So um, I, unless there's any questions, um, we're looking for. The motion. verbiage, um, it says, um, for the purpose of appointing or terminating the administrator, the mayor, and each alderman um, shall cast one vote. I think that needs to be changed to alder or we, alder person. Uh, yeah, we can make that change. That's okay. just a clerical change. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. Any, anything else? Anybody like to make a motion? I make a motion to approve ordinance number 0719. I'll second. Motion by Hackett, second by Chestnut, that the council adopts ordinance number 0719, 2019. It's an ordinance under the city of Opaca, chapter one, general government section 1.12, uh, dealing with the city administrator and the appointment, term of office, and removal. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, just for the record, should that motion be uh, with the changes noted this evening? Sure. Thank with, you. Yeah. And you're okay with that, Steve? And no, Mark? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, so it is amended. Thank you. Yes. Thank Russ. you. Appreciate that. So with that one change. Any other discussion? Sandu, call the roll. Steve Hackett. Aye. Lori Chestnut. Aye. Paul Hagen. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. Paul Mayo. Aye. Dimitri Martin. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. And Eric Olson. Aye. Ten ayes. Motion carried. Okay. Under uh, new business, we have uh, the request from Mike Stroik. Uh, for 3H Brew LLC to extend their license premise description to include a 40 by 80 tent in front of 810 Churchill Street building for Hinderfest to be held on September 7, 2019 from 12 noon until 10 p.m. And Kathy, you got your name all over this, so you want to help us there? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this uh, is a new uh, event for um, Mr. Strike and H.H. Hinder Brewing, and uh, this is going to have a tent on the outside. We have uh, looked at the special uh, event permit uh, application and reviewed it with the police department, had, had made some changes uh, to make sure that there will be uh, IDs checked with wristbands, uh, fenced area within the front of the uh, area, um, the tent area, and we also will be putting no parking signs on that side of Churchill because there is the possibility that someone may want to park on that. There is parking available. But Mr. Smith is here tonight. If you have any questions, you want to tell us a little bit about the event? Well, we don't know a lot about the event because we've never done this before. Um, we're just going to have uh, three different bands from 2 to 10, a tent outside. Um, we're releasing our Hinderfest beer, which is a version of Oktoberfest. So we're a little different twist on things. As you know, we're a little goofy over there, so we like to have a little fun. Um, uh, we're going to have food. Actually, the Humane Society is doing all the food and getting all the revenue from that. Um, and... Most always at our place, it's been uneventful, and I, I do expect the same. We do have one of the reserve officers lined up, and we actually shrunk the area from what um, the police department and staff had dr drawn up for us. So we don't know exactly what to expect for the amount of people. We're hoping for a fair amount. All right. Anybody have any questions? Uh, if not, uh, we would need a motion to approve this request. Move to approve. Second. Motion by mail, second by Prochatsky, that uh, 
the request by Mike Strike be approved uh, to extend their premise description to include a tent uh, for September 7th, 2019 from 12 noon to 10 p.m. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, good luck. Hope to see you all there. <laughs> All right, uh, next up, we have license report number 1462. This is a Class B intoxicating liquor license and Class B fermented malt beverage license. And uh, Russ, uh, you want to just get us set up here, too? Are you? Or is, yep. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I actually prepared, in, in working with Sandy, I prepared a memorandum that is on page 83 of your packet. Um, the, the background on this is uh, Metzl's Club 22, I uh, believe, closed, um, which um, the owners surrendered their license. Um, we advertised the license, and we, we actually have three applications. This is not uh, unusual um, when a license become available that you have multiple people interested. Uh, one of the interest is from the current owner of the property, Ms. Uh, Christine Fox, um, and there's two others that are, that are interested. Um, so it's really a discretionary item for the council um, to decide um, who to grant the license to moving forward. Uh, the only additional comment is that Danes Hall has an additional request if they're not successful in a full uh, blown class B, class uh, intoxicating liquor, and class B fermented malt beverage, that they're also looking for the wine and, and beer license in the alternative. Uh, so um, there's not much of a recommendation from staff because this is really a, a discretionary item for, for the council. A question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Can we just, could you just delineate the difference between the Class B and the, just go through those various licensures? Um, sure. What they mean? Um, a, basically, a Class B license is for consumption on-premise, and uh, Class A is for off-premise. Um, and then um, the, the, the main one is the intoxicating liquor portion of that, and the other one is the beer portion. Um, you, you are limited by the number of licenses you can grant based on your population. And the uh, state statute also allows for municipalities to do reserve uh, license, which is the same thing as a regular license, except there's an additional fee. Uh, based on state statute, that fee is like $10,000 to apply for a reserve license. The other thing is a reserve license is uh, not transferable, a, a, a regular Class B license is. Um, and Sandy knows the liquor license rules as, about as much as I do. But I, I don't know if that answered your question or if you needed further explanation on something. No, I, in fact, I'm aware. I just thought the public okay. ought to Perfect. know what we're talking about. No problem. Thank okay. you. Okay. So I think the best way to proceed, since this is how it's worded on the agenda, is to give each one of the applicants the opportunity to speak on their behalf. Um, uh, and and they did, they've all completed the, the, the licenses, and uh, they've, right, Sandy? The applications for the, the license and stuff like that. So, uh, with that said, are you okay with that? I mean, I I think that's is probably the the best way to go. Um, so we'll start with the first one that's on there. It's uh, BC Royalton LLC, which is actually the address of the of the former property, which was called Club Twenty Two at eighteen twenty two Royalton Street in Christine. Fox is requesting to be the agent for that. Uh, Christine or Bob or both? Uh, 
Thank you for the time that you've allowed us um, this evening. It's a brief history on the property. Um, Fox Brothers is in the sand and gravel business, and we never, that was really never our intention to have the bar and uh, grill there. But as we needed to uh, expand and we were really cramped for space, the people we bought it from said uh, we would have to buy the bar and restaurant in order to get the other nine acres that went with that. So that's how we got the property. And um, that's been an operating establishment, as far as I can remember, like over 50 years in that location. So right after um, we purchased the property, we were looking for somebody to uh, lease it to and rent out and run it. And Mayor Smith and his mom and dad, they came to our rescue there. They were our first um, uh, tenants in there for uh, about 12 years. And um, of the different people that have been in there, they were by far and away the most successful at that. I remember where I was riding my bike down in Florida and I got the call from Brian and said, well, this is our last year. But so anyway, there's been, um, there were two other people in there uh, for about two to two and a half years. And then we got it back again. And we never sold the property. Um, we did have, and I don't know if I'll, the last go around was about eight years was the land contract. I don't know if that's technically selling it or not, but it was clear um, early in the year that they weren't gonna be there long term. And the land contract that we had with them, um, it expired. So um, we didn't have a, a valid land contract with them. In uh, the 21st of June, um, I had given uh, Crystal Mensa a check for, uh, I think it's $1,200 for the liquor license to keep that because the intention always was to um, do an assignment or of transfer or something, whatever we needed to do legally and properly because it had been assigned to three or four different people over those 25 years. Um, uh, I don't remember if we had it. If, I think we got it first. Then we, the Smith family, got the assignment, and then the next two people um, after that was assigned to them. And there's this uh, assignment to Crystal Mensel. And in uh, uh, talking um, to some legal counsel, we thought, well, what is the easiest and best way to do this? Um, not the easiest and best way. Well. If there was a disagreement between the parties, um, what we could have done is um, we could have foreclosed on it. Um, the land contract expired. In fact, we had started that process of foreclosure. So then the license, we would get it back when that ran its course. The um, uh, Mensels decided that they didn't want to get foreclosed on and go through a court legal matter and things like that. So we agreed and signed documents to whatever we signed to um, see if we could get uh, the transfer complete. Um, that's about the conclusion of Christine came down to the uh, city hall and asked how to fill out the paperwork and things like that. And we never thought for a minute that it was gonna be, it was just up for grabs again. We just, we really kind of, this dawned on this, um, this morning. So we made an emergency trip back, uh, back up here and uh, so that's our that's the story. That's our request um, without the the license. And we have been uh, talking about uh, it's been closed a couple of weeks, um, but we've had uh, remodeling contractors. Uh, we've been talking to them extensively about how we want to clean up and improve the building. And it's been some time since it's um, it's been taken care of properly. So we want to restore it to its uh, original grandeur. That's the request. And without that license, that's going to um, seriously decrease the, the value of what's there. So if there's any questions, otherwise I would say thank you all very much for your rapt attention. Laura. Uh, so in the future, okay, now, will Fox Brothers eventually want to maybe in your growth with that, sand and gravel, um, take over that property um, and, and then put it not to be deemed as a restaurant or is are you looking at that expansion, Don? Uh, I didn't want to do this, but uh, so uh, in our business succession plan at Fox Bros, we've been working on this for eight years. Uh, we've got a great team of people. So this is the 1st of July. Uh, I retired and sold my half back to the company. So 
that's not my call to make anymore. But I have asked my brother about it. We spoke about it a couple of hours ago, and I said, well, here's the current situation. And is when the opportunity came up on the other side of the uh, property, I think it's 1701 Royalton, on the other side of the Fox Brothers property, they opted not to. That was a rental house that we had together, and the company opted um, not to do that. And there was about an acre of land there. That's about the same as there is at, um, at Club 22. But I would think, Lori, to answer your question, if they decide not to do that at some point in time, they would in the future, well, then the license would go. But the, the current plan right now is um, they, they think they've got enough. I think there's about 24 acres adjacent to that. Bob, do you have anybody um, lined up to rent or purchase the bar? At this time, we do. Okay, so there's somebody actively interested in there. Yeah, yeah, there, there is, and we've looked at it and talked about the remodel and how we want to clean that up. So the idea would be um, that they would uh, uh, move in there as soon as the building is ready, and we'd be ready to start. So if Fox Brothers inevitably decides that they don't have a business use for that, which they've kind of concluded, then. Once uh, if this matter get resolved successfully, we'd um, get the paperwork set up with them and go to work. We're yeah, I mean we're you know hammer ready now to to do that once this is clarified. About how long do you think that remodel would take? I'd say about thirty days. Because, I mean, it was an active business. They just didn't keep up with maintenance and things like that, um, fortunately. I think just before um, the Smiths there last year there, we had got a new roof on it and taken a bunch of the infrastructure there. So, But probably uh, probably a month. It's hard to get some all of these kind of, uh, kind of lined up at once. Okay. Any other questions? Bob. Thank you. Mayor, may I, may I make a comment? You, you can. Thank you. Uh, and, and just um, for in the interest of full disclosure, Mr. Fox uh, mentioned that he had sought legal counsel. And in fact, I was the legal counsel that he had spoken to um, in pursuing his foreclosure action. Um, I negotiated with Crystal Mensel the deed in lieu of foreclosure uh, on their behalf. Um, and I'm I guess I should back up and say that I'm telling the council this in order to give some context. Please don't take this as me advocating for any decision um, either way. Um, and in, in fact, I think I, at this point I've got conflicts on either end here, but I, I think I just should bring it up so that he mentioned that he had an attorney and I should uh, tell the council that, that I was that attorney. And uh, in fact, um, after drafting the deed <coughs> of foreclosure and obtaining the signature on that, uh, that was a, a negotiation that um, involved um, Crystal Mensel uh, giving the uh, license to uh, the Foxes, uh, and then I delivered it to uh, City Hall uh, after they had submitted their um, application. Uh, in their mind, which was a, a application pursuant to a, a transfer of the business. So, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Okay, uh, next up we have uh, jo Joanna. I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll have to just say your name once you get up here. Thank you. And this is uh, for DBA La, La Margarita at 970 Furman Drive. Hi, this is Joanna, and that's Carlos. I'm Tony Hoos with ADI Development Company. I just wanted to mention we've been working with a current and past administration to bring new business to the city of Wapaka. We own the building at 1020 West Fulton, uh, which unfortunately Arby's moved out of, but we are relocating Domino's out of that building into the Arby's spot, and that opens up a space next to Anytime Fitness at the Furman Drive location, which is uh, where they would like to put their Mexican-themed restaurant. Uh, we just signed a deal with Dunkin' Donuts and one other national tenant. Uh, I, I'll mention 
later. But uh, anyway, uh, one of the things that we've been trying to bring to Wapaka is a Mexican-themed restaurant, which I think has been long overdue. So um, anyway, we would appreciate the consideration, and I'll let uh, Carlos and Joanna talk. Here. Hi, um, I'm Johanna Neuer is how you pronounce that. It's kind of weird. So, um, yeah, like Tony said, we want to bring a Mexican restaurant into the city of Wapaka. Um, you guys, it's a it's a pretty big city, and there's no Mexican place like it there. So I think it would do well. Um, so our kind of concept would be similar to Chipotle. You come in, you build your own burritos or tacos or some kind of burrito bowl. It's, it's made right in front of you. Um, and you can get that, it's fast. Um, and we want to get the liquor license so we can also have margaritas with the name like La Margarita, you kind of have to, right? So, um, you know, that's our concept. It's something different that there just isn't right now. So, yeah. All right, anybody have any questions? Did I read or see that um, you would be putting tables outside for that? Yeah, there's there's a patio out there right now, and that would be perfect for the summer. You know, you can come in, grab your burrito, eat outside, enjoy your margarita. Okay. But Where's the patio at? I was trying to figure that to out. To the side. To the building? side? Okay, looking at the building to the right? It's on the east, yeah. east side. It's on the east side? Mm -hmm. And there's a separate entrance out of the building to that. onto the patio. And then how many people do you think will be on the inside? Or, or you know, how many, how many can you serve with the inside and the outside? Uh, well, this is Carlos. Um, what the plan is to do, what, um, it might be like, I'd say, 20 to 30 people. But we want to start, like, that small. And eventually, if it gets, you know, if it get busier, um, we talk to the owner of the building, and he, he will give us more space so we can always... Upgrade the place there. And then will it will it be takeout also? Yes. Um, have you ever done this kind of thing before? Ran a similar business? I do. Uh, we have, me and my wife, we had a business in Molsoni right now. Uh, we run a Mexican restaurant down there, and then uh, I think we've been doing a great job there. Uh, I've been trying to be here in Wapaka like the last two or three years. It's been hard to find a space in the right location, too. And then now we found Tony, and then he's been helping us to, to get there. So we're hoping to get a legal license, too. Are you going to have a bar? At the beginning, it's going to be a little hard because we're going to, the space that we're using is not super big. But like you say, if everything goes well, of course, we, we build a restaurant like with a bar and everything. Any how, other? How about parking? Because I know there isn't a very much room to park up there, and a lot of times when the fitness center is packed, there's just no parking. How are you going to handle that? I can speak to that. Um, we had talked to a number of different folks, including Justin, um, and basically, if if this is approved, we will submit a site plan, and we'll make sure there's appropriate parking. If necessary, there is parking. There could be added parking to the north. Uh, uh, this yeah. parcel actually goes all the way through to the street behind it. So that would be the game plan. Thank you. Anybody else? Questions? I'm wondering how many people you would employ? Um, I think at the beginning will be around five, six people, I'd say, because it's not going to be super big. But like, of course, the plan is like you know to start like small, and and if we need more people to work, then of course we want to upgrade more people eventually. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. How big did your place get in Mozani as far as employees and also seating? Uh, and most of the we have like eight employees and we have like space. The building is around like 2,800 square feet. Um, I wish I can have a better, bigger building, but that's what I have now. 
I, I just want to jump in too on the heels of what Carlos said. Uh, James Moyer that owns the building at 970 Furman, uh, we did discuss with, with him who would be the landlord for these folks. And he said he would be open to carving out additional space uh, as Carlos alluded to before. So for the potential for expansion. So thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right. Question. I got a question. Yeah, Eric, I'm Is this sorry. license, if you don't get it, are you gonna not pursue it? Yeah, if you, like, the restaurant that we, I mean, that I, what I, from my experience that I've been, I mean, li uh, liquor license plays a big part of the, of the restaurant and then a full course, that's too, but like, I'd say liquor licenses, it's, it's it, without liquor license, it will be hard to, to proceed, yeah. Okay, any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, next up we have uh, Dane's Hall of Wapaka LLC, which is located at 301 North Main Street, and uh, William Clark is their proposed agent. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor Smith, Council President Mayu, and honorable members of the council. My name is William Clark, and I'm here acting as agent for the Dane's Hall of Wapaka. We come before you tonight seeking Class B liquor and Class B fermented beverage. Before I tell you about Danes Hall and why we feel we need these licenses, I'd like to tell you a little about myself. I'm a graduate of Opaca High School, class of 1998. I have been in the hospitality business for 23 years. While I was in high school, I started working at King's Table Restaurant and Catering and worked there for 22 years until its sale in May of 2018. When I turned 18, I took the responsible beverage service class through Fox Valley Technical College Upon completion of that class, I applied for and was granted a bartender's license through Farmington Township and held that license for the next 20 consecutive years. Through that time, I have taken the Responsible Beverage Service class many times to keep up with current, uh, the current laws and regulations set forth by the state of Wisconsin. I also went through the accredited Culinary Hotel Restaurant Management Program at Fox Valley Technical College under the tutelage of national leaders in the hospitality industry, such as Chef Jeff Eigel, Chef Richard Williams, and Chef Larry, uh, Gary Lyons, I'm sorry. On November 29th of this year, the Danes Hall will be celebrating 125 years of being the iconic anchor of, May of Wapaka's Main Street. Three years ago, Michael, Jack, and Joe Kohler decided that this great building needed to be saved and restored back to the 1894 vision of being Wapaka's great social and community gathering place. After three year years of restoring the building from top to bottom, we are honored to say that the building now proudly wears its National Historical Building plaque as a badge of honor. Our goal is to show our guests what great hospitality Wapaka has to offer, not only by our staff, but also the great services our neighbor neighboring businesses on Main Street and throughout the city have to offer. As it stands today, we do not serve any alcoholic beverages. When we have an event, our guest event organizers or club leaders must come to City Hall and apply for a special license for their event or work through a licensed retailer such as a caterer who can serve at their events. We would like instead to cut that burden out for our guests. More importantly, Danes Hall, as a highly visible landmark in Wapaka, wants to actively demonstrate a total commitment to responsible service, sales, and consumption of alcohol. To do this, we would like to be in control and of the safety of our guests and our community. <clears throat> As it stands now, we are at an arm's length when it comes to what regulations are being closely followed, and we would like to take that control into our own hands. With these licenses, we will have a tighter grip on who is served, what they are served, how much they are served, and if the items have been purchased from uh, approved dealers. This is key to our customer service policies. We would like our guests to be able to come in and have the most stress-free event that they can, sorry, they can have the most stress-free event they can with our staff taking on these burdens. We believe that if Danes Hall has chosen to receive these licenses, it would help support a unique business to Wapaka and North Main Street. With these licenses in place, we will also be able to finish our work on our wine and martini bar and commercial kitchen Danes Hall would then become a full-service event venue that is listed on both state and federal registries. 
It's services like these that we offer to our guests that will draw more business to our city and make the city of Opaka one of the most desired places to hold weddings and special events in central Wisconsin. I thank you for your time, and I can answer any question. All right, anybody have any questions of Bill? All right, go ahead. My question is, so then you're permanently here, you're in place, um, there's no designs to to move out of that location or take this somewhere else? No, the only thing that's not done is the basement portion of our commercial kitchen and then the bar, and we're just waiting on approval. Because we can't put a bar in if we can't serve anything. Right, that's correct. I have a question too. So if you um, are not granted this liquor license, mm -hmm. as I understand it, you would continue to subcon subcontract out that kind of work and potentially apply again in the future when the another license would open up. Is that correct? Well, right now, if someone was to have a wedding, they would have to bring in their own alcoholic beverages. So they have the control because it's like if you have a party at your house, you're in control of what's being served. We would rather have that control ourselves to make sure no one is being served that's underage, uh, how much alcohol they have, what is being served, stuff like that. Yeah, well, right, I understand that, but I'm just, I guess maybe it's not a question for you necessarily, but for the mayor perhaps. Um, is there any sense of how often these licenses come up? Or? <clears throat> not very often. <laughs> this is, well, I'll, I'll, history wise, this is the first. <laughs> time a license has come up in the whole time I remember. I think uh, when T-Dubs, they actually received the, the one from Oakwood. Um, but that that's, and how many years have you, T-Dubs been in business? 15 years. So that's probably the, the last time one has been transferred. Is the reserve license still available? Remember we discussed that two or three years ago. Yeah, that's, that belongs to, go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, that belongs to H.H. H. Hinder. There's oh, an okay. agreement yeah. in place with them um, okay. to get that 300 seat um, restaurant. What is the, and how many reserve, can I, are you done? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> how many reserve licenses are there? Are they unlimited? No, there's a limit. Uh, again, I think it was based, don't quote me on this, I didn't um, do the exact research, but roughly about 1988 to 1990s population. There's a formula that the city clerk has to go through to look at the population from that date and point in time. And it determined how many reserve licenses you were allowed to issue. So there's a max. And um, from what I understand, the city's at one. Um, you know, again, it was based on the population of the community um, that was taken at that snapshot in the late 80s, early 90s. So, and that's, that's unchanged. It's unchanged. And, it's, and, that, and that's where the, no, the number of permanent or regular license was also frozen at that population point of time at the same time period. How many people do you seat for an event? The ballroom can hold 150. The second level can hold 50. So you're looking at 200. They're not looking at 300 anyways for the reserve right. license, and, right? And Mr. Mayor, technically that 300 seating capacity, that's a, a new provision on the law that was just added that allows you to exceed those maximums if you have a facility pretty much geared towards the major uh, lodging industries and even had a banquet space of 300 or more. So uh, that was a, a recent addition to allow some flexibility over and above the maximum amount of regular license and the maximum amount of reserve license. So clear as mud, everybody? Meaning that uh, you have the regular <coughs> liquor license you have the reserve license, which costs ten thousand dollars. Then you have the, uh, and then you have the one where if they're over three hundred over capacity, you could also grant one.
But that doesn't fit the Dane's home anyway. No, and I'd also like to add that we do we do a lot of community <laughs> events with the arts board and uh, other like Rotary Club, and they're only allowed two of those specialty licenses for them to be able to sell uh, their own beverages to <clears throat> help make money. And uh, I know right now that the, the arts board is out and they have an event coming up and it's, they wrote that they're having wine on their invitation. So right now they're kind of waiting on us to see what's going on with that as well. Dave, go ahead. Is there a limit on the B and C without the, no. No. the liquor? You're talking the beer and the wine. Yeah, Fermented those are malt unlimited. and wine. Those are unlimited. Unlimited? Yeah. So they could still have that if they didn't get this license, I assume. Correct. We could, but then we would be at the bottom of every other event space in Wapaka has one. So if you're looking for a wedding and you're, say, part four, for instance, they have their license. So for us, they have to go through that rigmarole of going and get the stuff themselves and finding someone to serve it for them. Go ahead, Russ. I hate to muddy the water even further, but um, based on my experience and, and based on what I've known has happened in other communities, which is a good thing why you, you brought me on board, um, in addition to those three steps we just talked about, uh, there, is a, there is another option. I, I was just trying to check with your finance director uh, whether or not the city has actually pursued that, but there is the opportunity to go to a neighboring township that abuts the city, and if it's contiguous, you could have the ability to make an arrangement for any unused uh, license in the other communities. I'm not sure if the city has has pursued that option, but it might be something you might want to pursue if you haven't already. Go ahead. We have looked at this. Um, we have contacted the town of Wapaka, the town of Lind, the town of Farmington, and the town of Dayton. Uh, we thought we had uh, licenses that we could buy from the town of Dayton um, because at one time they were dry. They are not dry anymore. Um, the, their clerk had thought that they had five reserve licenses and the Department of Revenue said because they were dry, they have none. Okay. So they don't even have any licenses that they can sell. They can only get class A and B in fermented uh, and beer. So they're in a they're in a quandary too. So but we did we have been uh, when any developer has come in and looking for a restaurant, staff has tried every avenue that is available. Uh, to try and get a license. And the only option that we have now is that, that it has to be an over the limit uh, one where you have the banquet facilities of uh, more than 300 uh, patrons. Hold on, hold on. Bob, Bob, hold on. You, you just can't spurt out questions, but W repeat his question then, Kathy, and then answer it. You, you already did, but do it again. Sure. Dayton uh, is no longer dry uh, under, the, under their current, but when you look at the state law that set all of the reserve and licenses, they had none. They were dry, so they do not. It was based on how many license, regular licenses you had in 1987 or 85, I think it was, uh, and they don't have any. So that's why they don't have any licenses. Um, because they continued to be dry until just recently, they don't have any reserve licenses either to go with their population. So, but that's because they had chosen to be dry, so they exempted themselves from the liquor laws. Um, I, um, I'm just looking on the uh, revenue um, Department of Revenue site here, and it talks about the above quota reserve licenses. There is another provision that if you're an opera house or theater for the performing arts uh, operated as a nonprofit organization, uh, you could get a license. I don't know if that would qualify for Dan's home. No, we're not nonprofit. Okay. Yeah, the nonprofit is the biggest. Okay. 
Okay, any other questions of <coughs> William, Bill? No, Mayor? Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Mr. Clark, if you would get this license, do you anticipate being open like daily or is it just, just we are currently a special event? We are currently open daily now. You are? Yep. As so of three weeks ago, I'm there every day. plan to be open serving liquor daily somewhere? Well, we mm -hmm. hope to have parties booked every day. Um, the 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 ones that come up in my experience throughout the week are celebrations of life. So that would be like during the day. Um, the Arts Council, uh, Winchester, Rotary, they all go during the week at night. But Okay, but you're not open. You're never going to be open for just me to stop in to have a glass of wine. Um, that's not... That's that, not in your business plan at all. No, it... it very could be once the once we have a separate entrance that goes down into okay. that area. I don't know if you've ever toured. Oh yes. Uh, in that basement sure. area that was supposed to be a bakery. Okay. In right. the front where the bakery would be would be a a bar. Okay. And we would have tables down there. Okay. The only time that it would be closed would be if we had an event. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. I guess this would be the opportunity to uh, uh, give each one uh, one last uh, opportunity to, to say something else. So kind of like a public hearing. So Bob or Christine, if you would like to say something else, if not, uh, we'll ask, move on. But. I would just like to say that um, I think there was a miscommunication in the way that um, we, we believe that we were transferring and perhaps the city looked like we were applying for a new license and there was no real estate transaction or dollars exchanged um, in this entire transaction. And I'll tell you this, if um, we lose a liquor license, it will be a significant financial hardship to Bobby and I, because um, we own that property individually, and it'll be practically worthless without the liquor license. And it's valued at $78,000 with the liquor license. Uh, La Margarita, any other comments you'd like to make? I think we're going for zero. Okay. Dean's home? Sure. Uh, without this liquor license, it really does cripple us against the Gerald Opera House in Wyoiga. Uh We want to keep the business here. We want to revitalize uh, North Main Street. Um, since I put that open flag out, I couldn't tell you how many people are walking down from Main Street Marketplace, Fat Gretchen's, to come in and tour uh, our national land, our national building there. Um, Wapak is lucky to have it, and Wapak is lucky that the Kohler brothers saved it because it was falling apart. Um, it was very close to being torn down. And um, if you've ever been to a wedding or any kind of a thing, they have a bar. And by us not having a bar, that, that does cripple uh, what we can do. If we did, were able to have a full liquor license, we would be able to drop the room rental rates which would have more business come into Wapaka. Um, the wedding business is huge. Um, it, this, the bringing the people in isn't, just isn't for us. When you go to a wedding and your family comes in from out of town, they have to eat. So the restaurants around here make, get revenue. Um, you have to buy a wedding dress, Victorian bridal. Uh, they also do the alterations. The Studio 212 and Urban Out, Urban, uh, the ladies out in King, they do hair. It, it, it's, it's not just us, we're the epicenter, but we branch out to so many other businesses in this town that uh, we really just need the license. Or it, it's, it, who knows what's gonna happen. It's, um, you know, right now we rent on a Saturday night $3,000 for, for the space. If we had the liquor license and we had our commercial kitchen going up, we could cut that in half because we'd make up that revenue in food and, and beverage sales. 
So we want to kind of lower that down so we can bring more people in and uh, let the other businesses flourish as well. So thank you. Okay, so here's where we're at. And um, council, you have the opportunity to um, recommend, and we should do this through a motion in a second, one of the three, and then we would vote on it. I think it only takes a simple majority to approve this license report, which would mean you would have to have uh, six in favor of that. Correct? Um, I do have to tell you that I'm not sure, but I believe that I'm in conflict. So if I do have to vote, I would not be able to vote here. And that's actually why I have not made comments uh, throughout the night. I have my personal opinion on on what's going on tonight, but I don't <coughs> believe that I, I should give you that personal opinion tonight. So I would be abstaining from my vote in the future. I'm uh, not the agent for a, a liquor license in town, but I am one of the owners of that premise. So I, I'm not able to guide you any more than to tell you that if you'd like to make a motion, uh, you certainly can make a motion. Mayor, should I abstain too? I, I am the agent for T-Dubs. You make your decision on your own, I would suggest that you do. Okay. Are we still in discussion, Mayor? We are. Okay. I, Nobody's I, made a motion. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Um, I would like to hear briefly just a little bit about the circumstances of how a liquor license became available. Was it, was it a mistake? Was it missing a deadline? What, what, what exactly was that? Maybe it was mentioned and I missed it. I just was hoping you could review it. And here, here's a, the awesome part of this. Hopefully Sandy and Kathy can team up on this and Ross for that matter too. But here's the other interesting part on this. Tom, who we would ask for his advice, has, has already uh, said that he is in conflict also here. So uh, we cannot ask him uh, for advice on this. But you certainly can get uh, how Sandy uh, decided to put this on the agenda as the way she, the way she did. And, and maybe let, let me just jump in because I don't, I don't think this is a Sandy thing and I don't think it's fair. Um, but I will give you my, my viewpoint on what happened. Um, you know, it, it was presented to me that we had a license that was surrendered, and that's a, a legal process. Um, regardless of how that, that happened or the history behind um, the potential um, foreclosure on the property was not really made known to me. But once you have a, a surrender of a license, it becomes available. And um, after that happened and, and the public became aware of that surrender, uh, that's when we got the three applications. And so at that point, the decision on uh, the potential foreclosure on the property came to light to me. Um, but I've, I've also experienced this in, a, in another community where that whole foreclosure process went down or happened in a community, that license also became available in that community. So I don't know if I would have given any further advice than what I gave to Sandy, <laughs> suggesting that we advertise all three licenses, present them to you this evening, and for you to make that determination. And I hate to put City Council in that position uh, without a recommendation, but it really is, um, and I think, the attorney would be able to at least tell you, and, and even the mayor, is the granting of a license is really the authority of the city council to do so. And it's a really a discretionary item. Once a license has been issued, there is some property rights to it. There's no doubt about it. Um, but again, I'm not a lawyer and I don't claim to be one and I did not sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Um, <laughs> You know, once that surrendered, in my opinion, that 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 legal right is gone. So it really leaves it back to the discretion of the governing body to make that determination. I have a follow-up question: Is there 
specific paperwork filled out and a signature required to surrender? It's just a, okay. Yes. And yes. Uh, yes. And, it, and, and we believe, we, I believe I saw a notation in our files that that license was returned and notations that it was surrendered on a given date. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me ask Sandy to clarify. I believe there was a signature on that surrender. I might have misspoke, sorry. No, there isn't. Okay, sorry. But we have the license on hand. All right, thank you for your answers. If, if I may ask, um, if there was something in the process that resulted in the license to be uh, being surrendered that the folks um, object to, they would have the ability to sue for damages or something, I would presume? I, I don't know if I can answer that question. Um, you know, that the difficult part is the folks were the property owner versus the, the license holder. And there is a relationship between the property owner and the licensee. Um, but that's, uh, that's not really um, part of that initial application process. I mean, the, the arrangement between a uh, proprietor and the property owner, whatever that might be, whether they own the property or lease the property out, you know, it may become known when you, when you go through the process, but that particular item is not really known at the end of the process. Russ, let me ask a, another question of you. So if a license is, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm okay here, and I, I thought about this. If, if a license is surrendered, uh, what you're saying, is there so many days before you have to act on that license once it's surrendered? I don't believe there's a time constraint on that. Um, my only um, point is I'm aware that other communities have a provision in their code that would require a, pro, uh, a business entity to be in operation to maintain it. Well, PACA does not have that provision in their municipal code. So that's kind of a, a different answer to your question, but I do, I do not believe there's a, a specific time frame on which you have to grant that um, uh, okay, so surrender. This brings up another point. I, when I said to you, and, I, and I'm just adding, I'm just uh, handling this from an administrative standpoint here. Um, your choices really are to uh, vote for one of these three, or you could table this and request that we have legal advice at our next council meeting that maybe would answer some of your questions if you feel that that's necessary. So you, you really have that 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 extra option if you if you so choose. I, I just wanted to throw that out to you. I know that Paul had a question and and it was more on a legal nature than anything. And and actually Dimitri did too. So I think that's an excellent excellent idea. I think we need to tread carefully here. Um, and just make sure that we are doing the proper thing, uh, option. Is that a motion? I, I will. I will uh, I'll make that in the form of the motion that we table this matter um, until our next regular meeting and direct city staff to uh, seek counsel um, for advisement on this matter. Okay, and you would like to see that uh, legal counsel at the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Second. second. Uh, motion by Mayo, second by Martin, that uh, we table this uh, until our next regular scheduled meeting, which is Tuesday, September 17th, uh, to get additional uh, counsel on this, and we ask request that the council be at this meeting. Any discussion? The motion Scott? was made by Hagen. Hagen, who did I say? Mayo. To Mayo. I know you can't vote. It's Paul. It's, Paul. it's, it's hey, I know Paul, Paul and Paul, but so it was Hagen and Martin. I'm sorry. Thank you, Paul, for sure. correcting me. Scott. Uh, okay, from an administrative standpoint, now 
I, I presume we maybe have to hire outside counsel because Mr. Hart is kind of in this case, yes. himself? Yes, okay. That's the reason we're tabling it. Right. I, I just want everybody Sorry. to know that I may, we may have to go out and... Well, I think Kathy yeah, has somebody that can yeah, help. You do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Russ. Just, just one final comment. I think, uh, you know, tabling this is a great option. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, it has, I know it's been done in other situations similar to this. So um, that would be your safest course of action. Thanks, Russ. Any other comments? I, normally we just take a voice vote here, but I think we'll do a roll call vote on this. Yeah. Dimitri Martin. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. Paul Mayo. Abstain. Steve Hackett. Aye. Lori Chestnut. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. Eric Olson. Aye. Paul Hagen. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. And Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Nine ayes. Motion carried. All right, so what's going to happen, uh, the three of you? Uh, uh, our next meeting is September 17th, um, and it starts at 6 o'clock also. That's usually our longer meeting, so, uh, you know, and, and somewhere we'll try and get you as close to the beginning of the meeting as we can, but uh, an agenda will be sent out to you. I emailed. Did you all receive the email? Okay. And so she'll send you a new agenda for the next meeting. Okay, any questions? All right. Um, so next up is, uh, I'm assuming then, uh, the Dane's Home, you would still like to go forward with the Class B fermented malt beverage license, or would you, ra would you rather wait until after the 17th? We'll wait to see what the outcome is for the full license. Okay, so you'd like to have this tabled also? Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion to table this? So moved. Second. Motion by Hackett, second by Keelan that we table license report number 1463. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Against? <coughs> motion carried. All right, uh, we have next up uh, license report 1464, which is a dance hall license for Dane's home. You're all over the place in here, you guys. Uh, and this is, uh, again, for 301 North Main Street. Uh, William Clark is the agent. Um, so uh, pretty straightforward, the dance hall. Uh, we would just need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion by Keelan, second by Peterson, that we approve of license report 1464, which is a dance hall license for Dane's home of OPAC LLC. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Against? Motion carried. All right. Thank you. Good luck to all of you. Um, next is the extension to de development agreement between Nino Padrelli, uh, DBA State Street Realty Advisors, LLC, and Kathy, you got your name on this one. Thank you, Mayor. This item is on page 94 of the packet. Uh, the city has been in uh, negotiations and working with Mr. Pedrelli to develop the old St. Mary's Church property. Um, we're getting closer, but he's asking us to provide him with additional time. Um, so in the highlights, uh, the changes in the agreement uh, would be to uh, give another um, 11 months um, instead uh, and have it that he's has to have uh, a preliminary plan to us by November 15th, uh, and that we would have until um, February 1st, 2020, to continue to work and approve his development plan. So we're trying to work as much as we can with Mr. Pedrelli to get that site developed. And there would be no, there's no cost to, to doing this. Okay, uh, I just have one question sure. that I just thought about now, Kathy. Right now. I, uh, there, there is not property taxes on that property or is there? There will be property taxes for the 2019 tax bill because we did transfer it to him. Okay. But so for there last year, there was, there will not be. Okay. No. So by going past 
the end of this year, somebody's going to have to pay the property taxes Correct. on that. Okay. And it'll be Mr. Pajali. Okay. And he's aware of that. That's yes, part of his is. agreement. That was part of his agreement. Okay. All right. Uh, so the good news is he still thinks that he can, that he can put a project together here. Uh, the bad news is he needs more time to figure out what that project's going to be. And he, he did show some preliminary options to staff that they shared with me, but I don't think he's ready to show those <clears throat> publicly yet. Uh, but uh, so he's, he's, he's still in the process. So we might get something uh, going on that St. Mary's property. So that, that would be great. Kathy, uh, only changes are the dates. That's it. The only date is extending it out now till um, February of 2020. Okay, thanks. Well, Kathy, there's still a steadfast date of June 1st, 2020, that you would pay us the 75000 There's yep. no change in that? That still stays the same. So if he, if he doesn't, you know, he'll end up paying us for it. But I, we, we think that we, we should be able to come um, by the end of the year with something by this November time, we're getting close. Okay. Anybody motion want to make a approval. motion? Motion for approval. Second. Motion by Hagen, second, second by Fair, that the council approves of the request by Nino Pedrelli, DBA State Street Realty Advisors, LLC, to extend their development agreement date for the preliminary development plan to the city on or before November 15th, 2019, and the city shall have until February 1st, 2020 to work with Pedrelli to review and approve his development plan with the final development plan approved by the city on or before June 1st of 2020. Uh, any further discussion? Sandy, will call the roll. Dave Peterson? Aye. Steve Hackett? Aye. Dimitri Martin? Aye. Eric Wilson? Aye. Lori Chestnut? Aye. Paul Hagen? Aye. Mary Fair? Aye. Scott Prochatsky? Aye. Alan Keeland? Aye. And Paul Mayo? Aye. Ten ayes. Motion carried. All right. Kathy, thank you. Uh, next, uh, we're going to the library here. Adult Programming Library Job Description. Peg? And thank you, Mayor Smith. So on page 43, I have a memo to the library board. And it outlines the reasons for a change in the job description and a, kind of a switch in what we're going to be doing with our organization. When anybody leaves, it's always an opportunity to take a look at what our needs are for our organization. And for the library, um, our technical our, um, IT services have been traditionally a part of that assistant director's position. Dominic Frandrup had that. Emily Heideman, before she left, also provided those services for us. But what we've realized is that our staff has become pretty savvy, and um, Emily has left us in a position to be able to solve a lot of our problems. And so maybe having it, uh, a person dedicated to IT isn't as important. We also receive support from the Out of Gaming Wapaka Library System, the staff that are there. Um, so it opened up an opportunity us, for us to work with another city department to provide IT services. And so Josh has agreed to allow one of his staff um, to provide services five to six hours a week um, to provide those troubleshooting opportunities as well as perhaps classes. We're working with Clifford, Clifford Rab, Radke to, to provide those services for us. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to work with another department. We're also looking at um, changing the job description for our adult services librarian so that she becomes more of a managerial, the, the position is more managerial. And then uh, that allows us to look at a position called adult services or adult programming librarian. And when we look at the programs that we provide for adults, we don't have as rich and varied an amount as we do for those we provide for our youth and our community. And one of the reasons for that is that we have a part-time work, uh, a person working part-time on adult programming. And we really want somebody who's really dedicated to um, facilitating programming, working with outreach in the community. Um, so as we went through this planning process, we really looked at, you know, who is it, what is it we need right now? And one of the reasons to have an assistant director is to look at a succession plan for the director. Now, I'm no spring chicken, but I'm not ready to retire next week or next year. I'm looking at retiring in about five years, but what? who's to say that an assistant director we would 
hire now would be ready or willing to take on the position of director when I, when I decide to leave. So when we looked at what the foundation is for somebody coming in as a new person, as a director, we looked at creating a foundation that was really stable, where all of the parts are working in unison with each other, everything's working great, and then that new director can come in and be the new leader for a well-oiled machine. So our decision then was to go to the board and ask to have an adult programming librarian and to increase the responsibility for our um, adult services librarian. And so I'm bringing those job descriptions forward for you tonight, uh, as well as the um, compensation plan with a placement for those positions. And you can see the placement plan um, on page 55 and the job description on page 96 and 101. And I apologize for the formatting of the second one for some reason. Um, we have a little bit of trouble sometimes with the forms that were provided for us through HRGov, and so I had some formatting issues, which I'm sure that Cliff would be very happy to fix for me. Okay, so the library board is recommending that uh, we uh, uh, approve the adult programming library job description and also the adult service librarian job description. That's correct, Peg? It is. Okay. And one of the changes with the adult services librarian is that that would become a managerial um, position, so it would also be salary to exempt. Okay, and, and we are not approving the dollar amounts, right? I mean, that's the library That's boards? the library boards, but um, the compensation plan is, is something that is actually produced f uh, for the city by the council, and um, I believe that's on page 40, I think I got the page wrong, 45, um, or 55, page 55. And you'll see that the compensation plan um, was updated in 2011, and what we've done is we've placed those positions Adult programming librarian is a level eight, and a, um, the circulation manager, adult services librarian, is a level nine. And, and so they'll be paid within that range. Thank you, Peg. That's um, a good point to make that you're staying within the range that we, we have are. set up. Uh, let me ask you one other question, yes. Peg, too. Um, and this has to, maybe you said it and I was reading something else, but. You are staying within your current budget. Uh, you're not going to be will. asking for an increase. No. Um, with paying uh, an adult programming librarian considerably less than we would be paying an assistant director, it allows us to um, contract with the city for um, IT services. So I think it's a really good uh, move on our part to be able to use another city department, and, and we're thrilled with it. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or would like to make a motion? I think you could take both of these together if you want, these job descriptions. Motion? <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the job descriptions. Okay. I will second. Motion by uh, Chestnut, second by Keelan, that uh, council approves the out adult programming library job description and also the adult services librarian job description. Any further discussion? I, I've noted a couple of typos that I'll talk with Peg about later. But Thanks. Doesn't change the meaning, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Uh, so any other discussion? Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Remember that uh, H was uh, removed, uh, and we went to the... Uh, we had a separate meeting for that. We have a license report number 1465, which is an operator's license. That's actually on page 107, and they are recommending that all of them be approved. So moved. Second. Motion by, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Hackett, second by Hagen, that uh, we approve license report 1465. Uh, this is an operator's license. Um, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Uh, next up, we have the 
8,000 building rehabilitation, um, another one of our favorite topics, sludge tanks one and two. <laughs> Justin. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my memo can be seen on page 108 of the packet. So the 8,000 building is just one building down at our wastewater treatment plant. It is the oldest building of the plant, originally built in the 1930s. Uh, over the years with uh, rehabilitations and plant changes, uh, it's been converted. So it used to be the, an office uh, and these tanks that we're looking to rehabilitate or one time uh, used as, as a digester. They're big concrete tanks. They can hold over 60,000 gallons of fluid. Uh, they're very useful now for us even today. Uh, we use these basically as, as holding takes for our higher strength waste uh, to slowly feed back into our, our current digester. Uh, so they have use. Um, we want to renovate or renovate, excuse me, rehabilitate them. Uh, they need a little TLC. On the next page, 109, shows a couple pictures. One of them shows the inside view of one of the their, of the tanks, uh, showing the piping corroded, uh, the walls marred with stain. Uh, so this project, what we intended to do uh, was to do an internal cleaning, a commercial cleaning of, of blasting, um, replace all of the piping that's inside there, and then also uh, seal it off, and then we had an alternate item. Uh, so we advertised this bid as an, as an open bid process, so we went through that, uh, and we only received uh, two bids. Uh, so we set forward a budget of $100,000. The two bids that we received, one was within budget, one was well over. Uh, and what took us so long to bring this forward uh, since re opening up these uh, bids in late July, uh, we had to look at the third item. Um, which I don't have a description of what that is, but uh, on page 112 shows the handwritten bid. Uh, so third, thir item three, excuse me, was sealing uh, inside. So all the cracks would be sealed with a commercial utility sealer, which is just some thick gooey stuff would prevent any gas or liquids from entering or leaving. Um, the August winter bid, which was the lowest, had a, a pretty low number on this item. Uh, so we took time to talk to them with what they had spec'd out, and from what they had provided, it did not meet or meet our specification. So we worked with them to see if they could provide an alternative, and they couldn't. Uh, well, they could, except for it brought it over budget again. Uh, so they agreed to move forward uh, with just items one and two, uh, and we are going to take on the responsibilities of trying to secure a contractor to complete item three. Uh, so basically items three and four uh, would be subbed out um, and we're just going to take on those responsibilities of, of finding those contractors, uh, which <clears throat> we have already started to doing. Uh, so basically we're taking out the middleman, hopefully reducing enough overhead and we can try and get this to fit uh, within our budget. If we can't make it work, then it's something that we'll have to, to readjust, uh, replan for uh, next year or so. So at this point, uh, what I'd like to do to get this project moving forward, because we need to get this tank back online here soon, uh, is to, to get approval from council uh, for August Winter and Sons uh, for this project, basically just for uh, items one and two, which would total an amount of $67,150. And not to exceed amount uh, with the Funds coming out of the wastewater or uh, sewer utility. Okay. Questions? Most. Oh, Scott, go ahead. Well, Justin, if you do the first two, um, are you going to wait another year, or how's the timeline on the three and four? Then you would you have to drain it and start all over, or what's the? Yeah. So the the number three item. Uh, one, two, and three should all happen around the same time. So what yeah. will? Oh, you're tr okay. So what I'm getting at, as yeah. the order of the schedule works, yeah, the first thing that will be done is the cleaning. They'll replace the piping, and the third one will be sealing it off. And we're going to try and secure uh, one of these contractors on our own. Uh, we know we have a list, and 
we've reached out to a number of them to see what we can okay. do for a That's price to get this secured. Uh, the fourth item, which was an alternate one, is an exterior. Right. Basically, it's a, a metal access hatch and dome, uh, which we're looking to, to have one of our local metal fab uh, companies provide that for us. I guess I was just getting at not to, you know, if you're going to do cleaning and piping, you, you better be doing the ceiling right away. So hopefully you can yes. get it in budget. If you can't, then I guess you'll be back here or somehow you're going to do it no matter what, right? I, I, we're we're going to, we're, we're thinking we can get it done. We're pretty confident we can within budget. We just have to do a little more work on our end versus subbing out, having a, a general contractor sub it out. All right. Any other questions? Motion? I, I, I have a question first. Sure, go um, ahead. What is the current life expectancy of the piping as it sits right now? As it sits right now, um, less than five years. I mean, that's, it's, it's pretty, it's in pretty poor shape. So it's, it's been there, that piping, um, let's see here. I, I believe some of it is original from the 30s. And some of it's been replaced throughout the years. So, I mean, most, a majority of this piping is over 70 years old and has been in uh, a corrosive environment for those 70 years. So it's, old it's old time. Tank. And is the tank currently leaking where, where you have it spec to be sealed? We had an inspection done uh, about a year ago, and we did a uh, smoke test or a gas test, and we found a couple spots that had some smoke coming out of it. So, yes, there is a, a leak in there. Uh, we've done some external uh, sealing measures, I mean, with brick and concrete and <coughs> things of that number, uh, nature, tuck pointing. So we've, we've taken care of the exterior. We need to make sure that that's secured uh, with the internal ceiling. So after we would complete that item, which I've already described, we'd do that on our own, we'd do one more final smoke test just to make sure that everything's sealed up. And just to be clear, you need to clean it so that you can seal it, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't be able to seal. You wouldn't get a very good bond uh, for this material against the concrete if it was not properly cleaned, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody want to make a motion? Move to approve. Second. Motion by Hagan, second by Chestnut, that the council approves entering into a contract with August Winter and Sons Incorporated of Appleton for rehabilitation of sludge transfer takes number one and two for an amount not to exceed $67,150. Discussion? Sandy Colaro. Eric Wilson. Aye. Scott Prichatsky. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. Steve Hackett. Aye. Paul Mayo. Aye. Lori Chestnut. Aye. Paul Hagen. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. And Dimitri Martin. Aye. Ten ayes. Motion carried. All right. Uh, number 10, nothing tonight. Uh, it says none. Uh, communications, recommendations of the mayor. Just want to remind uh, city planning commissioners, you do have a meeting tomorrow night. <laughs> Don't forget, 515. Uh, I know you won't, but just to make sure. And uh, Kathy, you want to just update us again real quick on the on the budget uh, I'm calendar? going to be sitting down with the new city administrator tomorrow to go over the budget calendar and to bring everybody um, up to date as to what we're doing. Um, we uh, have uh, uh, probably only three or four uh, sessions that we'll need this time. For the simple fact is, is the TIF. I'm not going to re go over the TIF again. I think um, the TIF presentation that we did with before the Joint Review Board is hasn't changed anything. Um, you'll see. Uh, when we do present the budgets for the TIF districts, what their increments are, yeah, you know, we'll be working on that. But um, the next meeting, we are planning on having uh, R.W. Baird in to do the debt service and to look at the CIP plan. So, and hopefully we can 
get enough projects in for the million and a half that are estimating to borrow for next year. Okay. Thanks, Kathy. And uh, Aaron. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Uh, just wanted to share with you kind of my plan for the first couple of weeks. Uh, this week, I will be meeting with all of our department heads uh, and probably spill into next week a little bit, depending on schedules, uh, just to hear a little bit about what's going on in, in their departments. And then you guys will be getting an email from me. Um, and hopefully, uh, we can come up with a time to, to have a meeting. I'm going to have probably a couple pointed questions that I'll put in the email have you guys think about before we do meet we can meet in my office we can meet over coffee we can meet for lunch uh, whatever you guys would like um, and that's something that I would like to at least offer quarterly with each of you um, and and if you would like to speak more than that um, that's always okay as well um, and welcomed uh, some people prefer communication via email and maybe you want to throw questions to me that way um, some prefer in person I will be very flexible on any of that, but uh, I, I'll definitely look forward to to our initial meeting. I think it's going to give me some good direction on uh, kind of where everyone is uh, in a lot of areas. Um, so, so bring anything to me, and and I'll look forward to talking to you in the next couple of weeks. All right. Anybody else have anything for the good of the meeting? I, I do. Um, just uh, it occurred to me after we've already discussed and voted on the uh, in, uh, incorporation of our policy for making purchases into our amendment um, and referencing the, that policy. Um, I was just doing a little bit of research on whether or not there's any sort of legal guidelines for incorporating outside documents, and um, I wasn't unable to find anything specific for the state of Wisconsin. But I did come across some best practices, uh, and the suggestion is to include those policies, copies of them on the uh, public website, on the city websites. So I guess I'd just like to request that maybe that be considered, our policy manuals. That will be policy number one on there then. It's, you know, I mean, it, it's no different than tax law with, you know, case law behind it. I mean, it, I don't see that as being an unreasonable request. No, it's not. It's uh, it's fairly reasonable. And, and um, I'm a big uh, proponent of, of trying to get as much information out there to the public as possible. Um, the only additional comment is, you know, in addition to policies, um, a lot of municipal codes have fees that are adopted on a separate schedule that are not really part of the code. It, it's the whole idea that it's a little bit easier to, to make amendments to fees and charges outside of your code book. So having a policy is not that un, unusual, but uh, putting on the website is a very good idea. All right. Thanks, Russ. Anybody else? Move to adjourn. I'll second that. Motion by Hagen, second by Hackett that we adjourn till our next uh, regular scheduled meeting, which is Tuesday, September 17th, 2019, subject to call. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. We're adjourned at uh, 7.43 p.m.